Work on a wedding cake very fast, deliver it on Saturday, and then I'm back on a flight on Sunday and back to South Africa. Wow. Now yeah. looking back, I'm glad that I like, did. Hey, that was crazy <laughs> though. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm glad I did because, I mean, every business has to remain afloat. Whatever the challenge is, once you've started, you've dived in, you need to remain afloat. So at some point, it's automatic, uh, it's automatic that you'll, you'll do whatever it takes mm -hmm. uh, to make sure you remain afloat. So if, if my client mm -hmm. is a bride and what will give her peace and calmness is seeing me at her wedding, mm -hmm. then I'll get onto a flight in the night, endure it, get back, make sure her cake is right, deliver it, and then I'll be back on the flight, mm -hmm. you know? So, in business, is about risk. I mean, it's a lot of money that's going into the travel, but again, you're building your customer base. Yeah. I remember one particular lady, I think today she has about four children, and she has never baked cake anywhere else. So, you know, you're, you're kind of investing in something. Mm -hmm. You don't realize it then, but you're, you're investing in the trust that this person is going to put in you, hopefully mm -hmm. forever. Yeah, yeah, in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Wow, exactly. that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you meet your husband? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll take a sip. Sip tea. <laughs> My husband happened to be my parents' tenant. Okay. Yes, on one of their buildings. So, <laughs> so um, this particular um, month, I think they traveled and left me in charge. So you know how the drill is. You check on the tenants, make mm -hmm. sure they're okay. If they have a problem, they're supposed to call you, oh, this is broken, we need a plumber, I need to fix this. So mm -hmm. it was one of those uh, phone calls, I think, oh, I need this fixed. So I knew that he was an engineer. So he told me about a water problem in his apartment. Mm. Um, fine, I, I, I call a plumber, so I needed to take him to the apartment too. So when I got there, I asked him, I thought you're an engineer, can't you fix this? <laughs> so he was, <laughs> he was quick to say, I am not a plumber. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> like, please. <laughs> uh -huh. There's a difference between a plumber and an engineer. So I, I mean, and, and that's where it all started, really. Okay. You know? Much as I, I hit him below the belt, but he found <laughs> <laughs> by calling him a plumber. <laughs> Is it something he has brought up in the past? Oh, yes, and we laugh about it. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and then he, he asked me to join his home cell. Mm -hmm. I think by then I was going to a church of Uganda. I won't mention which one. Mm -hmm. And then he told me that maybe it would be nice if I got to know God in a deeper you know, where and he felt that if I joined this church, you know, mm -hmm. I would see the difference. And yes, it ended up happening that way. I joined his, his home cell. I mean, we would fellowship together every Wednesday and eventually our relationship, you know. So you started grew. out as friends? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So your parents? when you brought up the subject or whether they, the, they had seen him in the compound okay. around, <laughs> hanging around. <laughs> this, this is the funniest thing now. <laughs> I need to take a sip. <laughs> so before I could tell them what was happening, mm -hmm. he had to leave their house, you know? Okay. <laughs> because, I mean, really, he's there and they have been, you know, so, no. So he shifted and then we gave it about a month and I talked about it that you know what, I'm getting serious with someone. And yeah, and they were happy for me really. Mm -hmm. So we had an introduction, a wedding. Okay. And yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you have three yes, children. Yes, I have three children. How old is your oldest? The eldest is nine. She's nine. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
middle one is four, mm -hmm. and the youngest is two. Okay. So yes. you took some time before you had children? Yeah, not really. Okay, from university, yes. Mm -hmm. You know when you have to juggle all the, the, the all masters, mm -hmm. you're running up and down. Oh, so you did your masters even before you had? Mm -hmm. you know, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Yes. You're, you're not really in the... Okay, you meet people all over the place, mm -hmm. but I mean if... For example, you want to meet a Ugandan, you have to be in Uganda, so you know, yeah. In most cases. So I think there's a lot of moving before that, mm -hmm. but finally. Yes. So I only travel on business, you know, deals, and it will only be probably a week or two max, but I'm always, mm -hmm. most of the time, I'm in Uganda. Okay. Yes. This, earlier when we were chatting, you said, though, that your nature, you're also quite adventurous, you're quite mm. spontaneous. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so what are the kind of things that you do? Um, did you travel for, like, like for holidays before? No, um, interestingly, um, not really. Mm -hmm. my, my trips are always working trips. I'll mix business and pleasure. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, if I've been to Indonesia and I'm like, I cannot go to Indonesia, fine, I'll meet my suppliers, but I need to see the, the alligators, the, you know. So I mix the two. I'm yet to get in that comfortable space where I can live mm -hmm. just to have fun. Well, it's I've hard because the kids are still young. Yes, I've only been for, for that maybe for my honeymoon. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's always a mixture of the two, mm -hmm. yeah? So sometimes, if possible, I, I travel with my husband, and then we can have a nice time, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's never really been that, you know, I'm putting everything down just to go and rest. Mm -hmm. I, I look forward to that. <laughs> you look yeah, forward to the day. I really do, yes. Okay, are you yeah. sporty? Not really, no. No. But I do some exercises. Every morning I walk. Huh? You walk every morning? Yes. But I want to start running. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a bit too late. <laughs> no. It's never too late to start. But I'll I'm start like, running instead. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what's the motivation for this? <laughs> I walk every morning. I mean, it's, 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 I like that morning walk. It lasts about 30 minutes. Mm. It kind of frees your mind. Okay, I'll think about certain things that I need to do during the day. A few things I'd forgotten because I have nothing on me. No phone. I'm by myself. So, you know, you... you and sometimes I get all these business ideas because it's, it's, it's nice and free. I walk from 6 a.m. to about mm -hmm. 6.30. Okay. Sometimes I do a longer, you know, route, maybe 40 minutes. But, um, you know, it's a little bit calm, especially mm. during this COVID, um, after COVID. Somehow people don't leave their homes early because mm -hmm, yes. they're not taking their kids to school. So there's very light traffic. You might meet about three or four cars. And then you're walking through this nice, quiet neighborhood. So I like it. You can, you know, you, get, you, you tend to think about a number of things remember things that you could have forgotten and then you feel nice and fresh ah. yeah throughout the day so that's like your personal therapy session uh -huh. with yourself <laughs> and also when i drive myself i don't play any music i like to stay in the car quiet previously on crystal one on one what does tessa mean why tessa yeah so i was telling my mom that i wanted something local Mm -hmm. Can't be telling Ugandan entrepreneurs that they need to develop fantastic products and services that are local mm -hmm. um, when we're not doing that as well. Uh -huh. And so if someone in Congo, in Morocco hears Tessa, instantly they start to hear, that's different, what does it mean, where, it's, where is it from? Mm -hmm. And then you can explain that it's Uganda. Mm -hmm. So my mom, I wanted a local something. I wanted something that shows you know, you're planning with the entrepreneurs, you're discussing your, so from to tese or kutesa, tesa, like to plan to discuss to agree in Uganda. Okay. Um, and a lot of people ask, so are you Uganda? No, but it's very central to Uganda. Mm -hmm. People in Gulu, Kiandongo, Banyankole can speak Uganda. I felt like it would capture what we wanted and it would help us with the local theme. And, okay. Yeah, You know, hmm. oh, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is this also because maybe 
maybe your life can be so hectic. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. It is a baker's life, by the way. Because many of the things are on the go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And I think and even sleep is a luxury in many ways. No, but of late I do my eight hours. Now? Yes, okay. I do. I, can, I do make my eight hours of sleep. Um, but there are times when I would sleep two or three hours, especially when I was hustling the side baking hustle and then I still had the job. Mm. I needed to be at work at eight. I had to bake the cakes and decorate them and uh -huh. have them ready. It wasn't easy. <coughs> so now that I've gotten to this point where I have people that I trust, mm. I have systems in place, I have a team that takes care of all this. So it's nice to know that, okay, it was worth the that investment. That sacrifice yes, back exactly. then. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you also made a decision to go and get, I think, machines at some point to yes. really like mechanize your business, yes. which not many people had done apart from maybe the more commercial bakeries mm. that would do bread and, and all these other things. Mm. When was that decision made? Because um, I, I, I baked my first cakes in uh, March 2005. Then by the fourth year, I think, 2009, actually, my exposure, mm -hmm. when I went for my master's, I went for my master's in 2008. Ah, okay. There's something special about flying out and looking at what other people are doing. Mm. So, during the time I was in South Africa, um, I didn't have a work permit. So no one could actually take me up and give me a job. But I volunteered at a bakery, oh. a big one, very big. It was really churning out so many cakes. Um, and then I would see the huge ovens, uh, you know, machines. So it kind of unlocks your mind mm. to this, you know, okay. So this happens outside here. This is not a little cottage business in someone's house, you know. So you, you start to get the ideas. And then, when I came back um, and eventually decided to stop working for anyone but myself, yeah, my business actually started growing. So the more orders you get, the more you realize that, okay, this machine is setting me back. Mm. I should get a bigger ma machine because you've seen it somewhere before, okay? So somehow you 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 get to I can't even I can't really say this year maybe about 2010, ten years ago I think that's when we started uh, that's when I started buying bigger machines. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think one of the the things we're seeing now is a lot more people are getting into the baking industry mm -hmm. and uh, probably one of the biggest challenges is the intricate designs because mm. I think most people can kind of bake decent cake yes, yes. but doing the decorating process and mm. it's very time consuming. Yes, yes. You posted a picture mm -hmm. a couple of months ago mm. with this huge huge white, I think it was white, mm -hmm. wedding cake. Yes. How long did it take you to work on that? Um, I don't know how many <laughs> tears. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty mm. in teamwork mm -hmm. and numbers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you have big numbers of people, you need to feed them, you mm. need to pay them, mm -hmm. and of late, we transport them. So that, because of the yes, yeah, yeah, of course, because of the pandemic, you know, we drop them home and pick them every morning. So it's challenging, but again, it's paying in a way that you can produce so much work within a very short time. And the other beauty about having several people on the team is that everyone comes with their expertise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, as a business owner, you should be ready to let people fly, spread their wings and fly. Why? They will actually start doing things that even you cannot do. Mm -hmm. So you have someone who's very good at molding, then another person is very good at uh, something else, then you know, and then it all turns out into a nice team of several people. So our cakes keep moving on a conveyor. Mm -hmm. if Crystal is doing this part of the cake, then another person adds this, and 
before you know it, you're done with a very beautiful centerpiece. Mm -hmm. Okay? So yeah, it's teamwork. Mm -hmm. And a big team at that. So yeah, we can do the huge cakes. <laughs> <laughs> can do the huge cakes, yeah. Okay. Mm. So when you talked about being in South Africa, it seems mm. that was a time for you that really kind of made you made it clear what you wanted to do, working in the bakery. Mm. Have you done like anything else to like invest in your skills as a baker throughout yes. the years? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to Australia mm -hmm. as well. The short baking lessons. And then, um, interestingly, some of the skills come to me now they come looking what do I mean mm -hmm. you get a supplier from um, Egypt from the States from UK from someone who's making something mm -hmm. and they've read about you mm. and they think you can buy it from them so they'll come looking for you teach you how to use it and then you know ah. yeah so it's definitely important I've also taken um, leadership courses because it's not so important. Yes. I mean, you don't wake up one day and manage six pe 60 people. I mean, everyone is different, mm -hmm. different temperaments, different, you know, backgrounds. So it's, it's also very nice if it's, it's nice for a business owner to know how to handle people. Manage otherwise, people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can very easily sink the business yeah and right. over small little problems that could have been solved if they were picked up early okay. and solved right huh? okay. yeah all right so um, one of the things I wanted to ask you as you've grown the business through the years yes. you know, I think one of the things we I'm trying to really address on this show is mm. sometimes people look at someone who's successful Mm -hmm. They see where you are now, mm. but it's hard for them to see what where you have from. been through. Mm. So what are some of the biggest challenges for you? Was, I mean, did you have the support you needed? Mm. Um, as you look back, when you think about how you grew your business mm. to get to where you are today, what, what was like the most challenging thing? Okay, there are several challenges. I think every business has challenges. Mm. Um, there was a time in Uganda when we had a lot of blood shedding. Mm. I mean, <laughs> oh man! Oh my goodness. Can you imagine the cakes are in the? <gasps> oh yes! Oh, it was terrible. Mm. At times when I think about some of those incidences, you feel like you 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 are about to shed a tear. Like, mm. if I could sail through that storm, Lord, huh? <laughs> then what can I do? <laughs> It got so bad that we would carry ovens. You carry a huge oven and you plead with someone. You promise to pay the electricity bill. That's how passionate, you know, you get. You get to a point where you're so passionate and you're ready to do anything. Mm. Even if you're going to lose, lose out financially, but at least you're going to end up making your client happy. Yeah, you want to deliver. Uh-huh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, you know, you would carry... Yeah, I've carried an oven and mixers to my sister's home. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's where our family comes in important, very handy because they'll they'll take up your, they'll help you handle your problems. Mm. Okay, mm. so that I'm I'm glad that it's it's generally been sorted. It's not so bad anymore. But uh, even that aside. <laughs> This was an interesting story. I yeah. once had a staff member who was stealing from me. Oh. Yeah, I mean, these are normal things that happen. But she stole so much money. Was yes. she like an accountant? She was handling Yes, the... she was handling uh, uh, mobile money, the phone payments. Mm. <laughs> so, but luckily when I got wind of it and, 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 and called the police when we had her in jail and then she had to plead for her, her freedom. So she gave me back a lot of that money. Some of it, no. Oh. Like, yeah, she had it. She had used a lot of it, but at least she had kept some. So, and then I'd never imagined that I could wake up and own a new 60 kV generator. This is a very expensive machines. You could buy two big, beautiful cars mm -hmm. out of that money. 
So at that point, because it had been something that had been bothering me, you know, whenever the power went off, mm -hmm. you'd be, you know, your heart would just <laughs> kind of stop beating. Yes. So we were able to buy a generator. But the beauty of it is, see how a bad scenario can turn into a good one? I mean, oh. someone has been stealing from you, so they save some money for you, and then... <laughs> one way of looking at it. Yes, and then you can buy this one thing that can can kiss goodbye. All these electricity, you know, connected mm. problems.